Hello and welcome to CS50's Introduction to Game Development, Assignment 5, Legend of Zelda, The Pot Update. My name is Raphael and in this video I will show you my solution for this assignment. Let's look at the objectives. The first one is implement hearts that sometimes drop from enemies at random, which will heal the player for a full heart when picked up. Okay. So first we'll take a look at the heart sprite sheet. Of course we only need the full heart here on the right side, but I figured that this heart is pretty large because it's 16 by 16 pixels, therefore we will resize it a bit. In game objects I defined the heart object with uh, some properties, so type heart, texture is hearts, frame is 5, and then we see something interesting here. I added a variable called scale and it's 0 0.6 and therefore also I multiply width and height with 0 0.6 and this ensures that the game object heart will be drawn smaller, so with a scale of 0 0.6 to the screen. It's not solid, but it's consumable, which is also a new property. Let's look into GameObject.Lua. So here we see the new scale property, which comes from the definition and is 1 per default. And then we have the consumable property, which is just a boolean, true or false, and the default empty consume callback. And in the game object render function, we see here that I added the scale into the love.graphics.draw function. So the zero here is just for the rotation, we don't need it, but we just pass in the scale here and therefore the heart spreadsheet is drawn smaller or larger if you pass a larger scale, of course. Okay, let's look into room and have a look how hearts are actually dropped. So we are now in the room update function and while we're looping through the entities, we check whether the health is gray, uh, less or equal than zero. If that's the case, I added some new code here. So if the entity is not dead yet and uh, we have that random five equals to one, so uh, yeah, random chance of a heart being dropped, about 20%. Then we create a game object, a heart, with the definition and we spawn it, spawn the heart in the center of the killed entity. Then we define an unconsume function which takes a player and heals the player for a value of 2, which equals 1 heart basically. And we also play a pickup sound which I just copied from the previous assignment. And then we insert the heart into the objects table. Then we have to consume it and this is done in this loop right here. So trigger collision callback on objects. So we loop through the objects, update the objects and if the player collides with an object we call on collide. This is mainly for the button which opens the doors. And if an object is consumable we call the unconsume function and pass in the player and then the player is healed and after that we remove the heart in this case or the object. Then one thing is still open so the player heal function is also new. I added it into player.lua and it takes a value and sets the health to equal to self.health plus health or six, like the minimum of those two, because we don't want to heal more than six health, which is the maximum health. Perfect. Let's jump into the game really quick. Uh, okay, we got hit already, so let's kill some. Oh, we already got a heart. I will try to get another one. Yeah. Okay, we see that the heart is a bit smaller than the hearts which are drawn into the left top corner and I think the size is, looks pretty nice and if we get some damage we can see that the heart heals for one full heart. 
Yes. Let's look into the next objective. Add pots to the game world from the tilesheet at random that the player can pick up at which point the animation will change to reflect them carrying the pot. And the player should not be able to swing the sword when it is staked. Yeah, just a heads up, so I will not show every code change for this objective because it's pretty big, but the main things uh, will be featured now. First we have a look at tile sheet, the numbered version, and I uh, took the pot tiles 14 and 52 for the broken pot and 14 for the fixed or intact pot. And uh, I added, of course, a new game object for the pot, which is just named pot, <laughs> of course. Then the texture in this case is tiles, so the tile sheet. Then we have frame width and height you know, 16. It's solid, and the default state is intact, so the yeah intact part. And then we have also other states, for example, broken, which is yeah, the broken part, and then we have also lifted and flying, which are only relevant as states but have the same frame as the intact state. Yeah, so in play state, we actually where we actually create the player, uh, I also added the other pot states, so I added some. Um, yeah, states where we walk with the pot, or we lift the pot, we walk with the pot, or we are idle with the pot. So these are added in here and are all uh, separate files and separate classes, basically. And another main thing here would be pot.lua. So the pot has its own class now. I created a file for it. Uh, it inherits it inherits from game object, and in the init function we also init call the init function of game object. This is not relevant now, but we have some functions here to change the state. So init lift change the state to lifted and set solid to false. This is important so that the lifted pot cannot collide with enemies because it's on our head now and we don't want to. Yeah, do collision detection then. And the other things are relevant later, except the render function where we basically just call the render function of the game object. And the other code here will be shown later. Fine, let's look into room and see how the pods are spawned. So we are in the room generate objects function. This is the suitable place to put in the code for the parts. And uh, I defined here a variable number of parts, which is just a random integer between two and five. And um, yeah, that's the number of parts we will generate in each room, basically. And for each part we yeah call the pot class constructor or we initialize a new pot with the game objects definition and uh, pass a random position in the map then we check whether uh, this new pot uh, collides with existing objects so if the position is basically valid or not and if it's if it collides with the player and if it does we go to continue and try again and if not we have a valid position and we insert the pot into the objects table then of course we decrement the number of pots to be created and this is a while loop okay and now we will go to the end of this file where I ended a small for loop again over the objects. So this is in the room render function. And this is only for the case that a part is lifted 
or a part is flying, which is not relevant now. And if a, if uh, the object is a pot and it's lifted, then we render it on top of everything else because it looks better in my opinion. Fine, let's look into player idle state and look at the flow where we actually, how we actually pick up a pot and then walk around with it. So starting off, we are in the player idle state, so we're not moving. And in the update function, we check whether a player stands next to a pot and faces it. And therefore we iterate over all objects in the current room. And if the object is solid, then we call the self.entity collide with solid function and pass the object into it. And this is a new function, so we will lo we'll look at the logic now. But basically, if if this returns true, so if it's if the player collides with it, uh, we store this object in a variable. And this function here can be found in entity.lua, and the description basically uh, says that what what it is for. Collision detection with solid object. This method ensures that an entity cannot walk through solid game objects. Additionally, it is used to check whether the player is close enough and facing the correct direction to lift a pot. So two, thing, two things are covered here. Uh, the one thing is that the player and also all other entities cannot walk through pots. And the other thing is that uh, it returns true basically if the player is allowed to pick the pot up. So first we distinguish between entities and player here and therefore added a new uh, variable to entity which is player for the player and then ghost, slime or whatever for all the other entities because the player needs a uh, adjusted hitbox as you can see in player collides which is the code which was already there. And then we have also some variables to keep track of the center of the current entity and the object. And then we do the collision detection. So this is a code which uh, yeah, was created by me, of course, and maybe there's a better way to do it, but it works for me. So if we uh, have the direction left. So if we look to the left, basically, and the center of the entity is uh, x, y is greater than the object center x, y. So it's to the left. <laughs> uh, the part is to the left. And, and then we have an expression here, which just ensures that the part is also in the correct height. And if this is the case, we uh, first reset the X position so that we cannot walk through the object. This is similar to how the wall collision detection works. And we set collides to true. And then we do it for all the other directions and return this collides variable. Okay, so if this is true, we bump to the solid object and then we are allowed to lift it. So we store the object in pot to lift and break the loop. And then uh, if we bumped into an object, we check whether we press the, or the user presses the key F. So this is uh, in my case used to pick up a pot. And if F is pressed, then we call the init lift function, which recall makes the pot uh, not solid anymore and changes its state. And then we change the state of the player into pot lift and we pass the pot which we want to lift. Okay, then look into, let's look into pot lift state or player pot lift state. Here we initialize the player pot lift state, we pass in player dungeon, set the pot to nil and change 
the animation to the correct animation. So here also some code which I will not cover, which is how you add all the animations because this is pretty simple and it's done in entity devs. Okay. And yeah, it's similar to all the other animations we have already for walking around or swinging the sword. So as we enter this state, we, we get the pot from the parameters and store it, uh, refresh the animation, and then we um, uh, then we calculate the new coordinates for the pot. So the pot should be on top of the player's head. Therefore, we have like the x coordinate is the same, and then we have a slightly adjusted y coordinate so that it looks good. And then I created a timer.tween here. So in 0 0.3 seconds, uh, the coordinates uh, yeah, are adjusted basically to the new position. So this time span is basically the time the animation takes to finish. So in my case, uh, each frame takes 0 0.1 seconds and we have three frames of animation for the lift animation. Uh, I will show it really quick in the entity devs. So pot lift, so lift left for example, we have three frames here and 0 0.1, so the whole animation uh, takes 0 0.3 seconds. And therefore we have 0 0.3 here. And then after it's done, we change the state to pot idle and pass the pot. Uh, while we are in this state, we also draw the animation, of course. So pot idle state is next. This is uh, inherits from entity idle state. Uh, we also have basic initialization. And as we enter this state, we set the correct offsets for rendering. And we also store the pot. And the update function is important here. So we update also entity idle state dot update. And uh, this is more important. We always update the pot x position to the correct position above the player's head. And uh, as we, uh, okay, I mean, like it is called each time we update it, but in fact, we don't move anyway. If we move, then we change the state to pot walk and pass the pot again between the states. In player pot walk state, um, we also have basic initialization logic, init logic. And as we enter the state, we also store the pot, of course. And here in the update function, we also call the update function of entity walk state. This is important for wall collision and also collision with other pods. And here we, of course, also update the pod X and pod Y position uh, so that the pod always is on top of the player's head. Okay, and then of course, as we press different keys to walk around, we change uh, the animation to be the correct one. And if we don't walk, we change again to idle state. Perfect. So one last thing here. Um, we also, as I said before, we also want to ensure that en other entities don't walk through pods. Therefore, in the entity walk state update function, I added a small section here where we also call the entity collide with solid uh, function with I, which I showed before. And this is called for every object in the room and ensures that the enemies are bumped back if they collide with a pot. So, Let's look into the game. Okay, so we already see some pots spawned randomly. And if I press F, we pick it up. So 
Also the tween animation looks pretty nice. And then we can walk around. So the next thing would be throwing the pot, but this is in the next objective, so I will show it to you once more. Maybe let's pick it up from the top now. Yeah, and then we can walk around and the pot always stays on top of you. Let's break it really quick and check the collisions so we can't walk through pots and I can uh, ensure that enemies cannot walk through the pots either. Which we may see now. Yeah, the ghost is stuck now. So, for the last objective we have uh, to implement the ability of throwing a pot. And the pot will travel in a straight line based on where the player is looking. And it should break if it collides with a wall, travels more than four tiles or collides with an enemy. And should also do one point of damage to that enemy if it collides with it. Therefore we will first look into pot lure again, where we skipped some code before. So for the pot to be able to fly we need a move speed, we also need a direction and we need to uh, store the distance traveled because it should break after four tiles basically. And then I also added flashing so that if the pot breaks or should be removed it flashes before because I thought this looks quite nice. Uh, yeah, I think it looks a bit weird if the pot just disappears. So I added some flashing and this is basically just the same logic as is used for the player flashing as the player is invul invulnerable. Yeah, so you can look at the code there. Okay, the pot init lift function we already covered before and now we have two new functions to change the pot state. We have init throw which is obviously called when the pot is thrown and we also pass a direction here. We change the state to flying. It's solid again so we, that we can collide with enemies or other things. We set the move speed to 100. Um, then, yeah, the direction. And then we also have init destroy, which is called as the pot needs to be destroyed. We change the state to broken. This also um, ensures that the other tile is drawn. So the broken, uh, not the other tile, the other uh, frame. So the broken frame is visible then. And it's not solid anymore, move speed is zero, and we also play a break sound, which I found on the internet. Okay, let's look into bot.update, uh, yeah, which is important for flying pots. So we first che check whether the pot is flying. And we also have a variable to keep track of whether it collided with the wall. And then we have collision detection with uh, yeah, with the walls on the side of the level, which is basically the same as for other entities. And at the end we also store the distance traveled. And uh, if distance traveled is greater or equal than tile size times 4, or collided with wall, we call the destroy function. And then the state changes to broken and if broken we also make the pot flash. Uh, so we increment the timer and the flash duration and if the flash duration is greater or equal than one, so one second, we set self.2 remove to true. So this is also a new uh, property introduced into game object right here, defaults to false. And uh, we look at this in room.lua where we remove objects which have to remove is true. And now in the render function we simulate flashing. So we draw the sprite slightly transparent. So this is the same as for the player flashing. So if it's broken and the timer 
is greater than 0 0.06. So this is the time which is transparent, and then it's normal again, and so on and so on. And of course, set the color back to white in the end for drawing other things. Fine, so we left off in player pod idle state, and if we have the pod on our head, we can press F to throw it. But we can do this also in the pod walk state. So if F is pressed, we change the state to pod throw, and we also pass the pod. In this new state, player pod throw state, we have also a new animation. Uh, this is just the lift animation inverted. So we have an animation for picking up a pot, and I just inverted it for throwing the pot, basically. And um, as we enter the state after 0 0.15 seconds, which is after the half of the animation is done, we call this init throw function, which makes the pot move in a in the direction where the player is facing. And after this animation is done completely, we change the player state to idle again. And we of course render everything and we don't need to update anything. Fine, let's look into room.lua for the last changes. So we are in room update and uh, in the for loop of looping through entities and updating them, we now have some new logic here where we check collision between flying pots and entities. So if uh, an entity collides with an object which is solid and the object state is flying, so I see here I could move this to the first if statement, but yeah, never mind. <laughs> so if the object is flying and it's solid and the entity collides with it, we deal one damage to the entity, play the hit enemy sound, and we also call the destroy function for the object, which is only a pot in this case. Then we update the objects. So this code was already here now. And now we also check a collision between flying and stationary parts. So if we throw a part against the other part, basically, the part which flies should also be broken. This is not an uh, objective to be done, but I thought this, this is also a good thing. So yeah, as one object is solid and collides with the other object, uh, we call the init destroy function. Yeah, but only if the current object is solid and it flies, basically. Yes, and yeah, uh, recall the init destroy function sets to remove to true, and not really this function, but after one second is uh, one second of time has passed. Therefore, we check also if object to remove is true. Basically, we remove it from the objects table. And I think that's almost everything. Yeah, recall at the end, we also render flying pots uh, on top of everything else. And this is just done by rendering it at last. Perfect. So let's look into the game. Now we can pick up a pot and if I press F again we can throw it and it breaks. We have also sound. It breaks on walls and we can also hit enemies with it. For example this ghost here and he dies. And if it travels too long it also breaks. Let's go into a uh, room. So, yeah, it breaks after traveling four tiles. And we can do some more killing enemies. Oops, I can't pick it up now. Boom, okay, yeah, it's pretty fun. Perfect. 
Okay, so thank you very much for watching this video to the end. I hope that my solution was interesting and I was maybe even able to help you somehow if you had some problems. But be sure that you don't copy any code and try it on your own first because this is much more fun and you will also learn much more if you try it on your own. So thanks again and see you in the next assignment. Bye!